Right, well we are Fab Five, and I'm Leanne. I'm Alec. I'm Ryan. I'm Mary. <laughs> and I'm Amy. And uh, we did our project on Great West Financial. Um, so, um, so this, is, this company was formerly known as Great West Life. Um, my mom has actually worked there for 36 years, so this worked out well. Um, it was founded in 1891 in Canada and um, got its presence in the United States in the 1970s. Um, it primarily deals with assisting government, corporate, and nonprofit organizations um, with their employee retirement services, so like 401ks, 403bs, investing options and aid, so helps the stock market and everything. And their um, end goal is just helping everybody in their corporation and everyone they deal with um, gain financial independence. Um, so in 2014, uh, the merger of Great West Financial, J.P. Morgan, and Putnam, um, it combined their services to make Empower Retirement, and um, this placed them uh, to be the second largest retirement service provider um, overall. Uh, so their home office is um, located in Greenwood Village here close in the Tech Center. Um, which is pretty cool, and uh, they employ over 3,000 employees just in the, um, that one facility, and then over 1,000 other employees um, spread out throughout the United States and Canada. Um, so due to the merger, the company has undergone a lot of new structure, as you can imagine. Um, so they had to blend and incorporate all the values, the employee talent, the culture, everything across those three companies. Um, so this has moved to more of a hierarchical and performance-driven, um, uh, and they focus on technology and innovation um, a lot more. Um, and yeah. Um, so we got to sit down with Benji Goodrich. Um, he is kind of the senior HR guy and kind of a talent acquisition individual. Um, so these are some things that he told our group and kind of expanded on. Um, their kind of core values are their clients, our people, and winning together, and just broken down pretty much they're in business to help people save money, retire, and do what they want in the future with that money that they've saved. They want to bring in the best associates that they can find, whether that's through internal or external, however they can do that and they work to win together. So that's through relationships that they've built, um, internal, just really working together, creating that bond. Um, just as Leanne was saying, they recently transformed their culture. Um, before, they were kind of a, a tenured culture, um, so kind of how, whoever's been there the longest was gonna get paid, and it was uh, just, all about title and all about being there and kind of making your mark. And now it's kind of transitioned. There's still a little bit of both, but now it's kind of market driven and technological and innovation. So if you're coming up with ideas and if you're coming up with um, just competing with other companies and things like that, you're gonna be um, paid based off of that. And since we took three uh, companies and we merged them all together. It was a really unique situation trying to merge all three of, or two of those companies culture-wise and trying to take things from each one and trying to fit them all together. So that was the our clients, our people winning together um, kind of slogan trying to fit that all in. Uh, the interview process which Benji described to us has three phases essentially. The very first interview is done over the phone. It takes about 10 to 30 minutes, depending on how well the candidate is doing, how much they're describing, how much they're actively um, explaining and things like that. The very first thing that Benji and his peers talk with the candidate about are they give a rundown of the company, they want to see if the candidate is a good fit or not based off of cultural and behavioral questions. They want to see what your qualifications are, if you have any past um, experience within the financial industry. They automatically lay down expectations and what they want to see from you. And 
And something that Benji made very clear is they talk about salary right in the first interview. Um, not a lot of people do that. They do that to see if you want to stay or not. Um, the second stage of the interview is the in-person interview. And you do that with two of the hiring managers. Um, it's not really a forced interview process. They don't try and bait and switch you into coming in or it's all based off what you want to do. Uh, within that kind of second phase interview, it's more digging deeper in the cultural and competency-based questions, really digging in that fit part, seeing if you're really that, that person that they want within the spot that's open. And then pretty much the last phase is the final decision. Uh, one hiring manager is gonna make the, the main decision and they receive the yay or nay from seven or 10 people depending on the title, whether it's a, a CEO position or whether it's just a, a main entry level position. All right, now we're gonna go over talent acquisition. Um, so they post all of their uh, jobs on Indeed. So they're, all of them are gonna go to Indeed. Um, and then they also use LinkedIn, Career Builder, and a lot of other um, job boards. LinkedIn is their um, most expensive contract. Um, so he said that they only put about 20 jobs on there at a time. Um, they do participate in job fairs to bring people in. They usually do that just to get their name out and so that people understand who their company is and um, what they do. They also rely heavily on employee references, um, so they're going to look to those to bring people in. And one thing they, he talked about is headhunters, so he talked about two different types. He talked about contingency and retained. Um, contingency is somebody that, um, they're not like a permanent position with the company, so they're just someone that's going to go out there and try and find someone to bring in. And they don't get paid right away, they only get paid if they actually bring somebody in and they work. A retained headhunter is somebody that um, is kind of more, um, works really closely with the company and really understands what the company is looking for. Um, and they actually pay like an upfront fee and then um, you can bring somebody in. Um, but that's the two that they might use. They don't use it often, but it's something that they do look to using. Um, they use a job description rather than a job advertisement. Um, and they're pretty, they try to be pretty open on their job description so they don't try to, um, into working the call center, they are really realistic is what I'm looking for. Um, so they're a realistic job description. Um, they usually hire about 30% are internal hires, 25 are referrals, and then 20 is just somebody that's applied either through the job boards or job fairs or the headhunters. Um, they actually do have a lot of great benefits, um, and they pay in the middle, so they meet the expectations. They don't lag. Um, and then moving up through the company can be a little bit difficult. They don't have as many training opportunities, which is a place that they lack. Um, but it is possible, um, but it can be difficult without the training and proper onboarding. Um, so we're gonna go with the onboarding process. There is one day of orientation where you start to learn about the company and you meet with people. Um, then you have a training with the department manager, whatever department that you were hired into. In each department, Benji told us that there's like one person that essentially knows everything about that department. So they are kind of like the go-to person if there's questions. And it seemed like when we were talking with Benji that he was kind of the overall go-to person. Like he was the one person that knew everything about everything. So it kind of seemed like it started to affect him because he wasn't able to really work on what he was supposed to be working on because everybody was coming to him with questions. Um, they seemed to not have a very good onboarding process or is not very strong. Um, the employees are left to rely on someone who's not focused on training, so they go to somebody and they're not really like a trainer, so it might be a little bit harder to get information correctly because they are trained in that. So, so we did find problems within the company. Hope you're doing well, Matt. Hope California's nice. It's nice and cold here, <laughs> so we're jealous of you. Yeah. <laughs> So, we did find problems, we did find holes in the company, you trained us well, we spotted the problems pretty quick. Uh, pro career progression, which Amy kind of alluded to, um, they really don't supply adequate training, uh, career development for their employees. The employees are encouraged to find the training on their own. 
Um, in a lot of situations, the company will uh, compensate them for that, but it's just the sheer fact of the worker going out on their own to get their own training to try and progress through the company. Um, this is kind of the main problem we found is the overall, overall lack of resources for the hiring department. Um, a lot of questions that we asked Benji, the main answer was, well, we just don't have the money, or the company doesn't give us the money to do this or that, which I'll get into for uh, a couple of the solutions. Um, Benji doesn't have an objective scoring system for his candidates. He has standard questions that he uses, but he bases it off of what he wants to hear or what he expects to hear from the candidate. So he goes off of that, um, which obviously can affect uh, his grading style, especially if he has a lot of candidates to go through. Um, yeah, funding, losing track, focus of the job at hand. So Benji, like we kind of talked about, Benji is overtasked with a bunch of tasks that aren't even his responsibility because he is the go-to guy. He is taken away from his primary responsibility and it's part of hiring, the hiring process. So um, he says in, you know, in one day he's working hours of admin work, paperwork that could someone else could be doing for him while he's supposed to be focused on his real task. So those are the problems. These are the recommendations we have. Obviously, it's easier said than done, right? Investing more into the hiring department it's, it's easy for us to say that, but will the company actually do that? Well, that's up to the company, but we obviously agree that um, if they put more time, effort, and money into their hiring department, they can have a way more efficient system than what they have right now. Um, care more about the employees, and that's, again, that's something easier said than done. That's part of changing their whole atmosphere. Um, I personally believe that without career progression from the company itself, then that tells the employee that this company doesn't care as much as they I would think they care in me, so why should I stay here any longer? If they, if they don't care about my progression through the ranks in this company, why should I stay here? I should go somewhere else. Um, which obviously leads to employee turnover, which is something that he alluded to that is a problem that they have. So that's one of the ways that they can uh, prevent employee turnover. Um, devote more time for exit interviews. He said they re really don't do exit interviews at all for people that leave. Um, I think he said it was 18%, something like that in a year. He, he didn't have an exact number of employee turnover, but it's around 18%. Um, we asked him, why are people leaving? One of the answers he had was that they are not the most competitive when it comes to compensation for their employees. Uh, but there's obviously other reasons out there. That's not always the main case. So if they um, practice efficient exit interviews, they could get an idea of what's going on with their employees. Why are they leaving? What can they do as a company, even, even easy fixes to try and change that. Um, realistic job previews, he said they're, they do realistic job previews, but it's not that detailed. Um, they could shadow an employee for a little while, see what the company's like, but he said again, besides compensation, one of the main reasons that people leave the company is they are just not prepared for the workload um, and the difficulty that it takes to work in that company. So if they had a much more detailed realistic job review, we think that would either prevent people from the cost of hiring and then leaving because they can't handle it, or they can at least get mentally prepared before they start the job. Um, focus on delegating specific responsibilities to individuals. So Benji is overworked, like I said. Uh, if the admin work could be taken off to someone that's not as high level as Benji is, that could help him give him more time to focus on the hiring process, make it more efficient. Um, and obviously start utilizing an evaluation form. Like I said, he has an idea of what he wants to hear from a candidate, uh, but like we learned in class, when you're dealing with this massive number of candidates, it's good to have something on paper that you can quickly look to, score, and rate against, because if you're going off of what's in your head, how are you gonna score 20 candidates off of trying to remember what they said? Um, so having something on paper will really help his, his cause. And that's it. Thank you, Thank Matt. You, Don't Matt. make the test hard. We were here. We tried hard for you. We love you. Good man. <laughs>